Welcome back to my channel. I'm James. Today we're going to be reviewing, discussing, and analyzing some great animated films. So I'm excited to announce we're going to deep dive into Kubo and the Two Strings on 4K Ultra HD. Now this is the brand new restoration from Leica and Shout Factory. And also Box Trolls on 4K Ultra HD. Also a brand new restoration by Leica on 4K Ultra HD. So today we're gonna deep dive into both of these 4K Ultra HD releases. And I did all my exclusive testing and analysis on this. And I also did all my exclusive 4K versus Blu-ray image comparisons that I always exclusively do here on my YouTube channel to show you how these compare to the previous Shout Factory Blu-ray releases. So that way you can see if these are worth buying and adding to your collection and upgrading or if you don't own them at all if you should buy these 4ks now as always at the end of every review i always wrap it up with my review score that's a sum up of all of the quality of the release special features content image sound quality all summed up into an easy review score that explains in comparison to hundreds of other 4Ks I've tested and exclusively reviewed here on my YouTube channel so you know the quality of these and if these are something you should actually buy. Now we're going to start off here with the original Blu-ray releases from Shout Factory here. Now these just came out within the last couple of years and I actually bought both of them thinking that that was the premiere release. Well, boy was I wrong, and I'll get to that here, what I mean by that, in just a little bit. But, these are always the native images you see pulled directly from the Blu-ray disc and the 4K when I get to it here in a minute. That makes a big difference, because what the native images that are on these discs are always what affect what we see on our TVs. So these native images here are what are actually present on these discs. And, they were a decent transfer. I enjoyed it, I thought it was a nice upgrade over some of the universal discs that were before that, and I did enjoy them. But in comparison to the brand new 4K Ultra HD releases, these are brand new 4K restorations that were supervised by Leica with Shout Factory. And I can tell you as you've noticed right away off of those image comparisons above, it is a stunning transformation between these. Now, I originally did the original review of Coraline and Paranorman. If you want to check out those releases, I did that review here a while back when those first came out. I actually got those in about a week to two weeks before the release date to do my exclusive comparisons on those. Those are available right now for you to watch if you want to know the quality of those as well. But there are some similarities in these as well that I'm going to get to. But if you decide you're going to buy or add any of these to your collection, whether you want these limited edition steelbooks that I'm going to get into with you, or you want the standard releases, which I'm showing you the cases over there for the standard releases as well, I'll have all of these linked out below in the description section and as a pinned comment in the comment section below. That way, I've made it nice and easy for you. You click on those down there, they're on sale for the same prices everywhere. Never costs you anything extra by clicking on those links. So make sure if you're gonna buy any of these, no matter which editions you decide you're wanting to get, make sure to click through those links I posted in the description section and as a pinned comment down below. Now, as far as the image quality on these goes, it is a stunning image quality upgrade over the previous Blu-rays. Basically, with these new restorations, because of the new wider color gamut, which they actually did a new HDR master with a brand new color grading for both Box Trolls and Kubo and the Two Strings as well which is drastically a drastic difference from the Blu-rays. As you're noticing in those comparisons, that's a stunning transformation, even color tones, color shades, just the difference in the depth of the color. It is so much more pop and vibrancy behind it. Though I will say, as you're noticing, I'm rotating between images of Box Trolls in comparison and Kubo, going between the Blu-rays of both and the 4Ks. As I'm going through those images above though, Box Trolls intentionally is not as vibrant of colors as Kubo is. Now that's intentional based off of the original film and the way it was intended to look. So when you see that above the Box Trolls images coming up and you think, man, they look good over the previous Shout Factory Box Trolls Blu-ray, what you're noticing though those image comparisons for Box Trolls is it's just not as stunning color-wise as Kubo is or like Coraline or Paranorman were. That's on purpose. Box Trolls is kind of to present a more brownish, grayish color palette with purples kind of mixed in and some greens and things like that, some reds thrown in there. 
but it's not overall supposed to be a more vibrant because it's supposed to be kind of a more dirty under the city kind of just more brown dirt on everything kind of color palette that's intentional but it's still a stunning transformation for this even over the previous blu-ray that shout factory did that even that the depth the clarity and the details behind these images are really something to behold that when you watch either of these films on these new 4k restorations Leica really knows what they're doing. The fact that they over-supervised this and then worked with Shout Factory, man, it's a match made in heaven, the quality of how these look. Now, these are both native 4K 2160p, so they're not upscales. That's another huge thing that helps out with these releases. Now, if you enjoy all the hard work and time I put into every single one of these exclusive review videos, Make sure to go down there and give this video a like and a thumbs up for me. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. That way you never miss out on any of this content that I'm constantly releasing every few days here on my YouTube channel. So make sure to go down there, give this video a like and a thumbs up for me, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. Now along with these both being native 4Ks, you do get, like I said, that brand new HDR master which has Dolby Vision on both of these and HDR10. I will say between HDR10 and Dolby Vision, the Dolby Vision is the clear winner. It easily was about 10% better looking than the HDR10 was on this. Now the HDR10 still looks phenomenally better than the previous Blu-rays. And keep in mind the images you see above of the 4Ks are always dumbed down. So what you see there is only standard HDR. So those images you see up there when you put in an HDR10 or Dolby Vision on your TV are gonna look drastically better than even what you see on these 4K images that are pulled directly from these discs because YouTube's algorithm dumbs all those images down from Dolby Vision, HDR10, all the way down to standard HDR. So again, what you see above will just look stunningly even better when you have them on your own on your home professionally calibrated displays than what you see above. Now another huge thing for these releases is they both got English Dolby Atmos mixes. Now as I talked about in the original reviews with Coraline and Paranorman, the Dolby Atmos mixes on these are a joy to listen to. They really took the time to make sure they provided the best for Dolby Vision, for the image quality and the sound quality with Dolby Atmos. It moves around things so well for animated films. It's really a surprising revelation what they were able to do for animated films. Remember, these are stop motion animated films. So they worked with that audio mix to make it a very good Dolby Atmos mix. And it is a reference quality Dolby Atmos mix along with a reference quality visual element as well. The nice thing is, is there's no fluctuations throughout this. There's no blocking, there's no banding, there's no issues that I could find throughout it other than there are some very, very slight black crush in the Kubo, but it is, I'm talking so slight. I had to be so super picky and it's in the top corner of the screen, kind of towards the beginning when they're going through the ocean. You can just see some black crush if you compare it to the previous Blu-ray. There's a slightly little bit more of the rain you can see than you can on the 4K, but that was it. And I'm talking, I'm being so nitpicky with that for all of you as I always do when I sit down and do my comparison side by side and go through them all. That was the only thing. The rest of it is literally reference quality and stunningly beautiful. Both films are just really a shocking experience how much of an upgrade they are over the previous Blu-rays in every aspect, visual, sound, special features you get all the special features contained on these you're not missing anything on these either now both 4ks had a very large appreciable increase in details and depth to the image over any of the previous blu-ray releases including the previous shout ones that i'm showing you above the depth that they're able to provide with these new restorations that they did on these 4ks is really surprising how you can see so much more detail in the backgrounds I talked about in the Coraline and Paranorman how because it's stop motion and you can see so much more of the detail in the fabrics and the clothing, these are one of those same thing. You can see so much more like in Kubo, like even on his fingers when he's playing the two strings on the banjo or guitar, or whatever you want to call it. But anyhow, when he's playing the strings and obviously the monkey character on the fur and their hair and everything is so beautifully detailed, box trolls? 
man, on the boxes they used, you can see their actual cardboard and you can see the little like hair sticking off the sides of the cardboard. You know, when cardboard gets frazzled, it kind of gets like almost like hairy looking. You can see all that clearly on box trolls and the dirt that they use to put on the actual characters when they're doing the stop motion to give them like their dirty appearance. You can see like the grains of sand on their face. That's how impressive the detail is on these that you could not see on any previous Blu-ray releases of either film ever before. The details and depth to this is so visually impressive. Even if you're not the biggest fan of stop motion films or animated films, these films are wonderful stories that have great meaning, details behind them, and things that really open your eyes to appreciating the amount of work they put into, the years and years of work to create each of these stop motion films. These are truly the ultimate way to view either of these films that has ever been available. Now showing you what you get in these, I went with the limited edition steelbooks to match my Coraline and Paranorman ones. They're very good price. They're not like 35, 50 bucks for these steelbooks. They're usually around 20 bucks. So 25 to about 28 is what these usually hover around price wise. And they are gorgeous steelbooks. They have a little bit of shiny artwork on them with different colors on them. Very, very nice. On the side here, it says Kubo and the two strings. Then on the back, it has another artwork on it, which I really, really like that. It's a very vibrant artwork on it. And then when you get inside here, they did a really great job giving us another booklet with behind the scenes. It's got basically pictures in it, talking about it, talking about things about making the film, the restoration process, artwork behind it. I really think these booklets are a very nice addition to these that make these a very premium collectible. And I love how in the steelbook it has shiny artwork on the inside as well of each of the steelbooks. So they didn't cut corners on any of that, which I really like. And I think the steelbooks are the way you should go. If you want the standard cases, they are about five bucks to seven bucks less expensive. But to me, the five to seven bucks for these steelbooks is definitely worth it. Then you get your 4K disc here and your Blu-ray disc. Now your 4K disc is a BD100. Plenty of room for the content, which I'm gonna to get to why that's important to understand here in just a minute. Blu-ray disc, BD50, 4K disc is region free. So as I always exclusively test every disc, those of you that wanna buy this or import this worldwide, I'll have that link listed down below in the description section and as a pinned comment in the comment section below. Takes you straight to Amazon, never costs you a penny extra, but that'll ship anywhere worldwide. Now, obviously those of us that live in the US, Canada, all of that, those links down there obviously ship to us anyways, but it will ship everywhere worldwide. Next up, we have Box Trolls. This one has a very vibrant color artwork on the front, even more so than Kubo, which is surprising because Box Trolls isn't as vibrant color-wise or color palette in the film, but I like it anyways. I think it does fit the film very nicely. I love how the artwork matches each of the films very closely. Again, it's got a little bit of shiny artwork on the Box Trolls word. Then it says Box Trolls on the side. These look beautiful on your bookcase if you get them in the steel books because they even did the Leica like little logo at the top that's in the square to match so that when they all sit on your bookcase, they have a matching theme to them that they look really premium quality. So big shout out to Shout Factory, working with Leica to make sure these look so nice because these steel books are really nice premium collectible. Back, it's got really nice artwork again, showing off more of the characters from the movie. Now when you get inside, again, they gave us this great booklet. Again, I really enjoy things like this. Going into the film, behind the scenes, showing artwork of the film things that they thought about when they were making the film. It's a fun read and it is something that I really like that they gave us in this. Then you get more shiny artwork on the inside. They didn't leave that out. Then you get your 4K Ultra HD disc and your Blu-ray disc. Again, Blu-ray BD50, region A locked. 4K is region free. And this is a BD100. Now getting to some more of my exclusive testing for Kubo, for the rough average bitrate on this, it had an extremely high and healthy rough average bitrate of 89 megabits per second. Another shocking, stunning release. They did a great job on that. Like I said with the disc, because it's a BD100, they gave plenty of room for the content, didn't compress it down, which is what lends to why this is such a beautiful reference quality release and it is really stunning to see in person. For Box Trolls, this had an extremely high, extremely healthy, and extremely strong 92 megabits per second rough average bitrate. Wow. And this one is, like I said, not as colorful as a film, but the details, and like I said, seeing the sand and dirt they put on the models and things and characters in this, 
You can see so much detail on it and because of how high and healthy the rough average bitrate was, again, that BD100, they did a phenomenal job with this transfer, not compressing it down, putting it onto this disc to make sure we can see every ounce of detail that's possible from the stop motion characters and the amazing work that Leica did with these films. That is why these just look so good. Now, like I was talking about, they both do have Dolby Atmos, but you also get an English Dolby True HD 7.1, and you also get a couple other audio mixes in French, Spanish, and then for Kubo, you get an extra Japanese audio mix. Then you also get English, French, and Spanish subtitles on them, so there is options on that depending on what subtitles or audio options you want to listen to this in. But I will tell you the English Dolby Atmos mix for both of these is a stunning reference quality experience. If you have a good Dolby Atmos setup, and I've reviewed how to get a Dolby Atmos setup on a budget. If you have not checked out that video series, you're really gonna wanna check out that video. I dive into a bunch of testing and analysis on numerous Dolby Atmos home setups and give you the best quality one on a budget that you can get for a reference quality setup. If you have a good Dolby Atmos setup, well, just like I talked about in that video, you will enjoy this. It literally, you hear things going over, the storm overhead, the rain, the thunder. You hear things like the snow and rocks beating against things. You hear things flying by left, right. I mean, it just literally does an amazing job moving things around. The LFV on it is great. It has highs, it has lows. It does a great job where you can hear the clarity of each and every sound effect, the characters, the noise, the clopping of shoes on rocks going around behind and overhead. I really can't explain to you how good of a reference quality both the audio and visual qualities on these are. Now, getting to my review score here. These are, as you know, I've said throughout this reference quality releases. These both get an absolutely stunning 9.8 and it is so well deserved just like i originally talked about with Coraline and paranorman i was worried that was kind of a one-off thing that Coraline and paranorman was going to be you know really good releases and then the quality of them was going to kind of go downhill after that thankfully both of these are on par with Coraline and paranorman's releases reference quality image and sound that will stun you at how good they are they are that stunning the films, if you haven't seen them, are good, enjoyable films. The stories in them are good. They're more kind of like darker fantasy tales is what I always look at Laika's things as. They're more just kind of grown up adult fantasies that yes, kids can watch them, but they are a darker films. There's a lot of things that it's just, to me, it's more of an adult kind of animated stop motion films. They are wonderful. I absolutely love everything from Laika the Studio. These are the reference quality, the ultimate and premier way to own and watch Box Trolls and Kubo. If you've bought Paranorman and Coraline, you owe it to yourself to buy these to add to your collection. I do hope we get the missing link next on 4K with this type of restoration that is reference quality. These are must buys. You need to buy these immediately and add these to your collections. I personally say buy them in the steelbook so they all match. Get all of them in the steelbooks because they are such reference quality releases. But if you want to save a few bucks, you can get them in the standard cases. It's the exact same content. You just don't get these gorgeous looking steelbooks. Now, as always, I post those links down in the description section and as a pinned comment in the comment section below. Now that you've heard my review score, these are reference quality releases you need to have in your collection and you need to experience these. You will be shocked and blown away, especially if you have a properly or professionally calibrated 4K, high-end 4K TV, high-end 4K player. You just, there's no way to explain to you how gorgeous these look. They just look beautiful, as you've seen in those image comparisons above. Bravo, Leica. Shout Factory, you did an amazing job. I am so thrilled and excited to see what you do next if you continue to work with Leica to release these and reference quality releases because these are absolutely stunning and are something everybody needs to own. Make sure to go down and start the conversation in the comment section below. Let me know how excited you are for these now that you've heard my review score, testing and analysis on these. Let me know if you've bought Coraline and Paranorman yet, if you've gotten to experience those. 
Let me know how excited you are to buy these and whether you're gonna get the steel books or the standard editions. I always love to hear from all of you, so make sure to start that conversation down below. Now, if you enjoy all the time, the hard work, and all of the energy that I put into every single one of these videos that I put my heart and soul into creating every single video that I create here on my YouTube channel, make sure to join my Collector's VIP Club. It costs you less than the price of a cup of coffee every single month, but it drastically makes a difference in the creation of these videos. That's the only way I can always continue to create videos, constantly provide this content for all of you. I am not sponsored and I'm not paid by anybody. So the only way I can always continue to do this is through all of you, my viewers and subscribers support. So make sure to join my collector's VIP club or give a super thanks to the super thanks button down below. It allows you to click on that button, give a tip of any amount on each video that also drastically helps in the support and the creation of these videos. I want to say thank you as always to every single one of my collector's VIP club members. Without you, this video would not be possible. I literally can only keep doing this through my VIP club member support. Don't forget to give this video a like and a thumbs up for me. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. Now over the next week here, I have a ton of stuff coming out. I've been working nonstop for the last two weeks as I got all this stuff in early for review. I've got tons and tons of reviews I'm gonna be releasing every single day to get as much of this content out to you as soon as possible. So make sure to stay tuned to my YouTube channel. Give each video a like and a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, make sure to go down and hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. As always, I truly hope all of you have a blessed day and I've always got something new and exciting coming out very soon.